Hi folks, in this second video about using TinyCAD, we will draw a slightly more advanced circuit diagram. The circuit we're going to draw is known as an A-stable multivibrator and looks something like this. From this sketch, we can see that it consists of two transistors, two LEDs, two capacitors, four resistors, and a battery. So let's open up TinyCAD and get started. Okay, so first we have to create a new diagram. So I just click on File and New. Okay, I'm just using the mouse wheel to zoom out there and we can see that it's a completely blank diagram. So the next thing I want to do is just click on the File menu and go to Design Details. So what we're going to do is just put in a title. So just call it an A Stable Multivibrator. author is me and we put in the details here okay that's enough for now i think and uh, go okay and you can see if i zoom in those details are now put in on the bottom right okay so now i'm going to bring in the um, little diagram we had earlier so we can use it as a reference and we're going to start putting in the components so i'm just going to zoom in a little bit on the screen and then we're going to start picking our components. So first we need resistors. So if I type in res this store. Okay, and then we can pick different types. And I'm just going to pick one I like. So I'm going to go with this type here. This is the European version of a resistor. So I'm going to click on the image down here and then I'm going to move into the drawing area. Now we need four of them so I'm just going to click four times and now we have four resistors put into our circuit. Okay so what else do we need? We need two LEDs so let's do that next. So let's find uh, LEDs here. We just type in LED and then we can choose different types. I'm just going to look through until I find the one I want. And I think this one would be the one I want to use. So I'm going to click on the image again. And we need two LEDs, so I'm going to put two in. Next, we want two capacitors. So I'm just going to type in capacitor. Yeah, I think the one I want is one of these. Let's see, capacitor, quite a few, electrolytic. This one here should do nicely. There are quite a few though. Yeah, as you can see, um, but the type I want, let's see. Yeah, this one here, electrolytic. This one is nice, so we'll use that. Okay, we want two of those, so I'm just going to position them roughly somewhere in the diagram. Next, we need two transistors. Let's pick a transistor. And we can pick the one we want. So the one I want is NPN transistor. So I'm going to pick two of those, so one here. And another one over here on the right. And the last thing we need is a battery. So let's go with, um, yeah, this one here looks good. So let's click on it, bring it in. Now we just need to adjust the different uh, settings for each of the components. To edit the components, then we just click on the arrow here, and then we click each component. So if we move this little window over here, we can see the details for each component. So this is the first one. I'm going to call this R1. So I'm just going to change that to a 1 there. And then the value is going to be, in this case, it is 470 ohms. And then this one is going to be 47k or 47,000 ohms. So we'll call this R2. And we'll put in 47k here. 
And this one is the same, but it's with a different reference, R3, 47K. And the last one here is 470 ohms again. So this is R4. Okay, so that's our resistor stuff. Next, I'm just going to change the direction that these uh, LEDs are pointing in. So I'll just click on my arrow here again, click on the LED, and it says up here. So I'm just going to change that to down, and then I'm going to change the reference to D1. And I think I'll just change this to uh, just LED. Okay, and then this one over here on the right, we're going to do the same. So this one is called D2, and we're going to have it pointing down, and just change the reference name to just LED. Okay, that's that one done. The capacitors are next, so we just need to change the direction that these are going in. So this one here should have the positive side on the left. Just go back to the left there. And this one here should have the positive side on the right. Okay, so they're positioned fine. And we can um, give them their references. So the first one here, we call it C1. The second one we're going to call it C2. I'm just going to change the name of each of these capacitors as well. So I'm going to see where it says here C electrolytic. It's a little bit bulky that name, so I'm just going to double click on the show option here and that toggles it to off. And then same with the other one then. Okay, and that's all that to off, but I would like to show uh, the reference. So I'm going to click on here and then I'm going to put in a value. So I'm going to put in 10 UF. And same with this one over here. So I'll show the reference. I'll put in a value. Of course, I have to toggle the value being turned on as well. So just double click on the no and it turns into a yes. The transistors are next, but in the diagram, they're actually facing back to back. So we just need to arrange them like that. So click on this one and then we're going to need to switch it around until we find the setting we want. So left works fine for that one. And then this one here has to be changed to right. Okay, so they look kind of different, but they're actually still the same. They're just facing in different directions to suit the circuit. So that might be a little bit confusing, but it is actually the same. It doesn't matter which way they point as long as they're connected correctly. So I just need to put in their references. So this one here, we call it Q1. And then take that box. And this one we call Q2. And finally, we have to put in the battery. So I'll just move this tool options out of the way for a second. And then I'm going to right click on the screen and just drag it over to the left a little bit to give us more room. And we have our battery here. So just want to change the information on that. And also get wanted to point the right way. So the positive side must be up at the top. So I'm just going to pick down like that to change the direction. And then bat one, just leave it D1. And we can change this value name over here to, you know, nine volts. So now it's a matter of connecting everything up. And if you want to move things, uh, it's quite easy to do. Say you want to select a group of items, you can just drag your mouse across them and they all become highlighted. And then you can move them around. So I'm just going to move these a little closer. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to use the right mouse just to move the picture around again. Okay, let's just start readjusting things a little bit. So I'll just move these capacitors a little bit. Move this over here a little. Move this over here a little. And this one, we don't need to be quite so far apart.
Okay, and I've got grid snapping on, which is this little button here. It just makes everything line up much more nicely. Now we can start connecting everything up. So we just need to select the wire option here on the uh, toolbar. And then we can just move towards our components. And when you get a circle, that means it's ready to connect. So let's click here, and then click again, click here, creates a little dot to show they're connected. Click there. That's that one done. So then we want to connect this resistor to the diode. That's that one done. We want to connect the LED to the capacitor. There we go. And we want to connect this one here. So we just click again. That's that done. We do the same thing on the other side. Just keep moving your mouse around and finding this where the circles join up. That's that one done. Just going to move these transistors up a little bit more. I think they're all right. I'll just zoom in a little. You can see the grid now. Let's just zoom back out again. So I'm going to go to my wire again. And then I'm going to click on my transistor. Then you go up here, click again. They're connected now. And the same on the other side. And the next thing I want to do is connect down here. That's those two connected up. And then we have to connect the bases, connect the transistors up. So I'm going to do click here. And then I'm going to click here. That doesn't look diagonal like the way we might like it, but we can fix that in a minute. And I'm going to click here and bring this one over this way. So we want to adjust those so we can actually click them. We can drag things around. So I just dragged this point over here and that gives me a diagonal line. And I can drag this one. And this gives me another diagonal line. I have to remember to straighten everything out afterwards. There we go. And this one. Yeah, there we go. Circuit is nearly done. We just have one more thing to put in, and that's the battery. So let's just, uh, just drag it in a little bit closer. Up here should be fine. And I'm going to zoom in a bit closer as well. So we go back to our wire and click here on the circuit, drag it out, and click there on the battery. Do the same on the other side. There we go. Now for those uh, perfectionists out there, I just noticed that the uh, this capacitor is slightly lower than this one over here. So I'm just going to click on the capacitor and drag them up one. And then I can click on these points and I should be able to uh, eventually be able to drag them up. A little bit of fiddling. There we go. Sometimes it's easier to just click on the point first and then drag it up. And it looks a bit more symmetrical. And you'll notice as well at this point here, uh, these two lines are crossing over each other and there's no black dot. So that means they are not connected. Okay, there's no connection at this point here. These wires are really crossing over each other. Now at this point, this is a good place to uh, save our diagram. Probably should have done it a bit earlier, but uh, Okay, so we go File, Save As, and just give it a name. So I'm going to call it Stable. Okay, and what I want to do next is um, show you how to uh, export the file as an image. Okay, I think we can get rid of the uh, small picture, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, so 
to export our image there's a couple of ways we can do this okay first one is to go to file and then we go export as image file and then what we can do is we can pick what type of image file we'd like to use so you can use bitmaps or you can use portable network graphics or pngs okay and you can use either black and white or color i like using color um so i am going to go with the color png bitmap and what i found tends to sometimes give better results is if you increase the scaling a little bit instead of just 100 percent uh, increase it maybe to 200 or 300 percent then you just pick the folder where you'd like it to go okay and select the name and click save then select export and that's it it will have exported that file now so let's have a look at the exported file we'll just click on our uh, folder where we saved it to double click the file and we can preview it here so you can see the diagram is taking up sort of a, a, an entire worksheet and you have your uh, title area down here in the bottom right and your image now the only thing is uh, if it's a fairly small diagram it's going to take up only a small section of the page which may make it look kind of small if you're going to be inserting this image into a document in some cases you may not want to use the uh, title box down in the bottom right and you may want to just use the entire image that is shown so what can be handy is if you uh, zoom in using your image viewer okay and just try and fit the picture within the window you can then use the windows shift and s keys to take a screenshot okay and you just uh, drag your mouse across the area that you want to keep And then let go of your mouse and that saves that to the clipboard so what you can do then is you can go into your document that you were writing and that, that image is saved to the computer's clipboard we can just open up the lab report that we've been writing and instead of using you know the hand drawn uh, diagram which doesn't look bad but uh, we could improve on that so if i just click on the hand drawn diagram select delete and then press ctrl v to paste it in we now have the diagram that we drew up uh, nice and neatly fitting into our document so that's quite handy to be able to do that for the purposes of this example i'm just using a LibreOffice writer here which is a handy and free uh, word processor okay we're just about done for this video but just uh, in relation to the grid which you have on your screen you know when you zoom in it shows the grid and sometimes you may or may not want the grid to be visible so you can go to options and go to settings and then you can tick show the grid you can also turn off the snap there's also a button up here for turning off the snap and then you can adjust the grid spacing to suit what you're drawing and um, also if you prefer to use millimeters you can select that or inches depending on what your preferences are there's a couple of other settings in here auto wire settings just in terms of getting the wires to kind of snap together automatically which i tend to like leaving on but sometimes you may want to have the uh, ability to change those settings yourself so you know experiment with those and then also backup settings here it will automatically try and save your file every 10 minutes you can change that to a smaller or a bigger number depending on what suits your um, preferences I hope you found this video useful and in the next video we'll use tinycad to draw a full adder circuit using logic gates just like the one shown here thanks for watching and don't forget if you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like button see you next time